Cape Sipes Custom Audio Reimagined. 2021 Dodge Ram 2500 with the Hemi. This thing's beautiful. I just did it like six months ago. Got the PAC Amp Pro to interface. We've got Sony three-way components in the front. So we've got the three and a halfs up there in the dash. We did the tweeters right here on the doors. We got the mid bases and the lower doors. In the back, we did the Sony coaxles. Under the seat, two kicker Comp RT10s. Back there are two audio control amplifiers. We have the audio control DSP6 channel and the LC 1.800. Fast forward to why it's in the shop because I'm pulling it all out. Him and his wife bought a house in Florida and they're out of here. They're going to Florida. We're going to live out the good life. So he does not want to have this big old V8 and he's not going to be pulling trailers anymore. So he doesn't need the 2500. So basically gas mileage and he just doesn't need this much motor. So he just got a 2022 Dodge Ram 1500. I'm taking everything out of this truck tonight and tomorrow. And then Wednesday and Thursday, we're putting everything back in the new truck. Everything should work out the same other than the sub box. The sub box is different because underneath the back seat of the 22 is different than this because this is a 2500 and that's a 1500. I just removed everything I put in his Ram 2500 and we're gonna put it in his new 1500. While I got this here, I might as well show you guys, girls, whoever cares, how to take the door panels off. All you need is a pick tool and a 10 millimeter. It's pretty simple. You just have to get aggressive with these. So behind the handle right here, there's gonna be a plastic snap. At the very bottom of the snap, you'll see a little lip. You'll slip your tool inside that lip and kind of pry out. The way they did this is kind of tricky because they put the snap right in the corner and if you pry on the wrong side, you'll actually create little stretch marks and tension marks in your plastic. You'll see that there's a little uh, notch right there for the bottom. The snap is right here. So if you go into this and you go over onto that side, you'll start getting the snap. You're gonna put a little tension over in that corner and there you go, you pull straight out. Now right there's what I mean. They've got one snap there in the corner. So if you slip under here and you pull on this side, you pull out, you'll create a big old white stress mark right in the middle. Right here into the pull handle, there's another tab. So right there in the pull handle, underneath, this is where I'm at. You go right into there. This one, you just wanna slip your tool all the way back and then pull straight out. So now you'll see a 10 millimeter there, two 10 millimeters there. Let's go ahead and get those pulled out. So now here comes the tricky part. I'm not kidding. If you've done 2500s and 3500s, you'll know that when you take off all the trim pieces, you actually lift straight up on the door handle and you remove it that way. This one, not so much. This is all snaps. I mean, there's snaps all the way around and there's snaps all the way across the top. There's nothing that hooks over, there's no lifting. And you have to get really aggressive with it. And if you think you're gonna break it, don't do it, but you gotta get aggressive. So I start down here in the corner and I'm literally gonna jerk viciously. Yeah. And then you're gonna pull this one. And then I'm gonna pull this up here. And then you have the uh, door handle cable, which is basically two little pieces of plastic you gotta squeeze in, which I can't show you, I'm sorry. Then you have the harness for the windows. So reach in here, find the little release tab, which is right there. And that's it. Now, you'll see what I mean by the snaps. Mm, you see these little bullet looking deals? Those are the snaps. So on the door, these are what those snaps are locking into. So you just have to pull straight out. This right here is what was in the door handle. See those two pieces of plastic? You have to squeeze them in. You'll squeeze them in, 
then you pull this little thing from the circle it's in, then you're able to turn it and release this. And this is how they have the uh, locks now. Instead of these being on like a rod, it's a little cable and it just kind of free floats here, a little crazy. That's the inside of a door panel of a 2022 Ram. I hope that helps somebody not to break a brand new Ram's door panel. So 2022 Dodge Ram 1500, to remove this area, you're gonna take this little rubber mat off the top here. There's gonna be two Phillips screws behind it. And then just like the door panels, you basically just get aggressive. I know, but you grab right here and you just pull straight out. I know it hurts. It feels painful when you're doing it, but that's all you gotta do. And now you have full access to everything behind this screen. If you're gonna lay it down, you think you're gonna rub it or do anything wrong, if anything's gonna get hit, lay a little towel down here. For what I need to do, that's all I needed to do is sit right there. So I assumed everything would be fine other than needing a new sub box. I was wrong. Come to find out the Pack Amp Pro, the CH41, which is what I use in the 2500, does not plug into a 22. The 22 changed the plugs behind the screen. So instead of one big connector, it's two little black connectors. Brand new 2022 wiring harness is gonna have to get tapped into. You have to hardwire the Pack Amp Pro into the truck. You cannot just plug in, which not really the greatest thing. It's not what I wanna do to this vehicle, but it's the only way you can integrate in. So I'm creating a harness to use with my tone generator so that I can verify all the speaker leads in the harness. Then I'm gonna go through and make another harness so I can verify all the powers and the grounds all plugging into the pins so I do not do any damage to this vehicle or screw up and grab the wrong lead. But here are the two harnesses that are different and not like the other plugs that work with the Amp Pros. So these are the two plugs we're looking at that are different this year. So the Amp Pro, it's a giant, you know, single plug that plugs in. This is what they've went to. One's green, one's blue. I've unhooked them from the back of the screen. I pulled off all the tape. Now these, I'm told, will not be behind the screen if you have an amplified system. This is a non-amplified system. If you have an amplified system, or if you have the Tesla style 12 inch or the 10 inch screen, it, these plugs would actually be found at the tuner. So blue and black, I've already taken off all the Tesla tape from the factory, stripped it back to there. So now what I need to do, I'm gonna go through here and test. First, I'm gonna test all the speaker leads. Then I'm gonna come through and hook the battery back up because right now the battery's disconnected and test the constant, the ground, and then we have some can wires on here. Once I have them tested, I'm gonna label over here what the wire colors are because they don't provide that. This is the color of the uh, Amp Pros harness. This is the connector number, the pin location, and then the function, but they didn't provide any wire colors. So I made lines here, I'm gonna put my wire colors so I'm not getting myself confused as I'm at the bench making a harness to work with this. Okay, so we have everything identified now. We've got all the wire colors for what's in these harnesses. The main thing now is to check to see how hard it's gonna be and how much time it's gonna add to run dedicated new wiring into the doors so I don't have to cut anything on this harness. So now we gotta do the military connections to the factory harness. So here we are, we got the uh, Amp Pro hardwired. I've got the Amp Pro mounted right there. I think it should be a good location, but I won't know until I snap the dash in. But here is the T harness now. So these plug into the factory radio. There's the T harness going over to the Amp Pro. So this is what you have to do if you don't have the big plug on the back of your screen. If you have these two little plugs, you can see they're keyed blue and green. Then you have to hardwire the Amp Pro in. We just did the dual sleep cycles and uh, it's showing data when I turn up the volume, which means Amp Pro is technically everything is good. So everything up here is done. Now 
we move back here. So what's next on the list is wire that, that corner up. So here are the boxes. That one slid out right now, obviously, and there's the back seat installed so I could test it. That's how the box is set. I was really concerned that they weren't gonna fit, but they actually are perfect. The seats sit right down to the top of them. All boxes overhang over this. If you look at any of the boxes for these vehicles, it says the sub box has to be removed if you wanna access these because they always come over the top of that. Now the issue is the wiring and the amplifiers. On the 2500, I had an amp rack on the back wall on that side of the vehicle and the power and everything ran down the driver's side went through the firewall. I have a gigantic lithium battery on here, so obviously I can't put the amps there. So I've been struggling to find where the amps can go. So there's my solution. So I took some cardboard, made a template, and I've cut that out of white PVC. It's mounted to the double-sided steel, so nothing's penetrating through the other side, nothing's coming out. There is a double stack of metal right here that's tagged into, and there's a double stack right there on the vent that right there is gonna be my rack to hold the six channel. So the six channel will go across the top, down below will be the crossovers for the Sony three ways, and the sub amp will be mounted there underneath that seat. Okay, so we've got the wiring and everything all finished up for the amplifiers. Amplifiers are there. We've got the back wall put back in. We cut out these openings here so the back wall could go in back to the original as much as possible, but we still need the amps to get some air. These have fans inside of them, so they'll be fine. You just gotta be able to make sure that the backs aren't completely obstructed. They have little slots in the side and the air goes through there. We just need to load the subs into the sub boxes, get them wired and put in here. So on this side, we've already got everything back together here too, got the trim. The speaker wires ran through the boot and here is our new speaker wire coming into the door. So the wire goes up to remove to remove this you push down on a clip on top a clip on the bottom this will pop out you'll move that rubber boot off of the actual housing you'll drill a hole through a, an empty spot in the uh, plastic clip then here you just pull this right out it's just a little grommet the rubber will go all the way through to the wiring. It'll hold the wires in a nice little channel. Take a razor, slice the rubber, peel it back like a banana. Then go ahead and put your, your uh, rod, your wire rod or fishing rod or whatever you want to use up through there. Grab your new speaker wire, pull it through, get it all back into that rubber banana peel that you did. Retape it back up the way it's supposed to be. Snap all this back together and here you go. Hey, what's up everybody? I've been at the shop now for a few hours working on the old uh, ram back doors are done door panels are back on back doors are finished speakers are in wires are ran into the doors all the trims back on all the wiring's there trims there and i've got all the wiring ran up front and to pull apart all that channel system run it all up there got those ran to there so they got to go into those doors same with the other side then i'm going to finish the front doors got the power wire all ran through the firewall got the fusing there then back through a factory grommet spot. There was a rubber nipple on one of those grommets for a pass through. Modified the battery cover there on the side to accept the new input. Sorry for the audio, but the vehicle's running, but I just wanted to go ahead and show that uh, went through now, tested everything. We're hooked up to the laptop. We've got the audio controls DSP, got it up and running. Amplifiers are over there going through and just uh, making sure all the settings are the same as they were in the previous truck. I'm already finding that we're definitely gonna have to back the highs down. Uh, the last vehicle's highs were not this bright. It's actually overdriving really hard. So I'm assuming that because this is a different radio, it's the Uconnect 5 system, they must have done something to their audio output, whether they've boosted it or added more power something has happened to where my signal is just a little too strong so spend about the next hour getting all this tuned in get it the way it's supposed to be make sure it sounds right uh, then i'll put the back seats in a sub enclosure from audio enhancers it's a split enclosure there was no single one piece enclosures available anywhere everything's tucked away nice and neat and here we are with the uh, application open for the audio control dsp 
This allows us to adjust the amplifier. So we'll use test tracks. So like, you know, there's your phase test, 1000 kilohertz, pink noise. So we can actually run pink noise through the system and we could actually go down here and look and see what the signal looks like. I've got the volume down, so let me bump this down to 50. Then, see, so we're able to see what frequencies are peaky, what's not, and try to get rid of any kind of reflections or anything. But it's pretty amazing what you can do with the DSP and how much better it can make your sound. Oh yeah. They said it couldn't be done. They said that an overweight 45 year old guy is not gonna be able to take a 2022 Ram, strip it down completely, run all new wire to every door, dash, and add tweeters up to the upper sills, do a dual amp rack, sub boxes, everything, and hardwire an amp pro because the plugs don't work without cutting any of the factory wiring. Oh no, nothing was cut. No rams were harmed in the making of this install. So there you go. Never know what I did. <laughs> Except the tweeters right there, which is exactly how he had them in the 2500. So we did them the exact same way. Sony middlers in the dash. Sony woofers in the door. So it's the Sony three-way set. Sony coaxels in the back doors. Sub enclosure from audio enhancers. And it sounds awesome. When you have the audio control six channel DSP amplifier, it's kind of impossible not to sound good. I think I missed dinner. My wife said she was making tacos tonight. I don't think I'm getting tacos tonight. All right, got another job to do tomorrow, later.